In today's video, you're going to learn exactly what code splitting is and how it relates to React.js. And this is going to be more of a conceptual overview of what it is and why it's useful. But in future videos, we will go into detail on how to actually implement this and other things that are important to know when it comes to code splitting. So when you create a React application or any front end application in general, you are going to have your JavaScript code to add interactivity to the web page. And you're going to need to send this code to the browser so you can add that interactivity. And when you send this code, this is typically going to be called your bundle. Now, when this bundle of code, when it grows quite large, it's going to take the browser a long time to kind of load up all this code. And the effect of this is that when you initially go to load your application, it could take you know a handful of seconds for your page to load up. And from a user experience standpoint, if you go to a website and it's just constantly loading and loading and loading and like you give it a few seconds, but you don't see your page yet, what do users often do? Well, they usually just leave. And this can have a dramatic effect on someone's business behind the application and just the overall user experience and the impression that someone gets from a, a certain company. So this initial load time is super important. And I believe Google even did some research on how much business value is lost with just seconds of differences in load time. So if you have too large of a bundle here, it can dramatically increase this load time and just decrease the overall performance of your app. And that can have some serious con consequences when it comes to the business behind the app and the user experience. So we kind of want to avoid this problem of needing to load up all this code. And this is where code splitting comes in. So code splitting is one potential solution for this. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Instead of just sending this very large bundle to your browser, you are going to split your code up into chunks and then just send certain chunks to the browser. And these chunks that you send are only going to be the code that is needed for the user to interact with your page. So for example, let's say that you have an application in which you have a sign in page to where a user can put in some information and then they can log into your app. Well, before they're logged into your app, you probably don't need to send them all of the code that deals with a logged in user. You probably only really need that sign in page and the logic for you know, you probably have a database where you're storing the user's credentials and kind of validating them and stuff like that. So you really only need to send to the browser the sign-in page. You don't need to send anything related to, okay, once you have a signed-in user. And if you just split your code into these chunks and you have one chunk for the sign-in page and you just send that chunk, well, that is dramatically going to increase your load time and it's going to make your page show up super quickly. And it's especially going to become important when a user is on a slower network or they are on a mobile device and stuff like that. So you could just create the sign in page chunk, send that it's going to load really quickly. And then once the user is logged in and they go to your homepage, well, you could load your code for your homepage. And then let's say they go to like a account settings page. Well, you could then load the code for the account settings page. So you're kind of loading this incrementally, and this is also called lazy loading. You're only loading what you need up front, and then you're just kind of lazily loading everything else when it's needed. And this can dramatically increase the performance of your application. And as I said earlier, I will cover much more in depth of how to implement this, but an example of how this might look in React is React has this lazy method on the React object that you get when you import React from React, and it allows you to kind of lazily load your components. So here, instead of importing my component directly from a file, so instead of saying like import component from some file path, you would actually use this React lazy function and you would assign your component to some variable. So I'm saying const comp component is equal to the return value of calling react.lazy and then calling this import function. And then I will, I'll cover this in more detail in the future, but effectively what this is gonna do here is React is gonna know that you only need this component to be imported when you first go to render this to the page. So React is gonna wait to load this component up to the page 
until you actually go to render this on the page. So this allows the component to only be within a bundle in, in which it's needed. So if this component has nothing to do with the sign-in page, you're not going to load it right away. You're only going to load it when you go to render whatever page uses this component. So this allows you to kind of split your application into these chunks and you only load the components or the code for the components for when you actually need them and when they're actually going to be rendered on the page rather than just loading everything kind of greedily up front. Now, there's definitely much more to this in which, you know, we have topics regarding suspense within React and using fallbacks and kind of the detriments of using fallbacks and then using air boundaries, route based code splitting. So you might have certain routes like homepage, account settings, different things like that. And you could code split based on those routes. All of this can help with preventing you from needing to send a large bundle to the browser and just having a really long initial load time really hurting UX and most likely business value within your application. I know when I implemented this professionally with our code base, we were able to increase our initial load time by about three times, which dramatically increased the amount of user signups we were getting. And, you know, at the end of the day, user signups are super important for the, the business behind your application. So this is definitely a important topic to understand. And hopefully this conceptual overview gives you an idea of kind of the solution that code splitting solves and how it works. But in future videos, we'll cover the actual implementation of this. So thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for those future episodes here. Maybe I'll link them if I already have them created and I'll see you in that next one.